Welcome to this week's edition of More Insights and Strategies Game Time Tech. And, you know, I'm here today with my co-host, Melanie Brew, and we have a special guest on today. His name is Will Townsend. We work with him a lot, and we're here to talk a little bit about Game Time Tech talk, I guess, with uh, the Olympics coming up. And, you know, Mel was just in Paris, and she got a chance to really you know, take a look at what's going on in that sweet town, right? It is that. But we have a lot of our customers that are uh, partaking in the Olympics. We want to get a little bit more information from Will, whose customer is Cisco, about what they're doing with the Olympics this year. Quick disclaimer, then we'll jump into it. This show is for information and entertainment purposes only, but we will discuss publicly traded companies on this show. Its content should not be taken as investment advice, even though sometimes we might want to give it. But so let's jump into... Uh, um, Mel, why don't you talk a little bit about what you think about what you saw in Paris and what you think uh, we want to talk about on this show with Will at Cisco. With yes. Cisco. I was just in Paris and I saw, well, first of all, I, I, I was at uh, Wimbledon, if I haven't mentioned that, like 8,000 <laughs> times. I saw, still wearing my Wimbledon hat, one of, one of many that I got at Wimbledon. Um, and then I was in Paris and all around town, you can see all of the different setups for the Olympics. There's like along the Seine and then like near the Louvre, there's all these different places where there's things you can see where there's areas for spectators and there's areas for where streets are blocked off where you can see that there's going to be, you know, some sort of production, something. So you know, when I read this announcement that NBC chose Cisco for their production in Paris and you, using 5G, I can understand the the reason for it because of all of the various locations and some of them are like down all the steps like in on the river and then like all throughout the city and it's an old city. So like you have infrastructure issues. So when I read this, of course, you know, I, my first thought was, hey, let's get Will on to talk about this. Will is our 5G expert and and networking expert and you know, we talked last week with Anshul about 5G at the MLB All-Star Game mm -hmm. and, um, and what T-Mobile did there. Let's start a little bit with that, just because I know, Will, you've talked so much about, you've written a lot about how 5G in stadiums will impact the fan experience. Let's start first with just the the connectivity and the fan experience and how important that is. And then we can get into kind of more of the technical stuff about the broadcast of it because that in itself is like a whole different level <laughs> it really is yeah and hey robert mel thanks for inviting me on um i've i've loved your podcast and it's a it's an honor to to, to spend some time with the two of you. Thank you from a fan experience um i have spent a lot of time in venues um i i met with f the the coda circuit of the americas here in austin and in, in f1 I had a less than stellar experience a couple of years ago with the public mobile network bombing out with things like point of cell connectivity, not working, fan apps, not working, and just not a great fan experience. And then, um, then I visited some venues that just uh, really focus on driving an exceptional experience for fans and at times over investing in infrastructure like Chase Center, where Aruba has a footprint. Uh, and also um, the FC Austin soccer stadium Q2 as well. And that's a, a T-Mobile installation where they've standed up a, a 5G standalone network uh, to ensure, you know, great connectivity experiences and that sort of thing. So, you know, number one, you know, operations, like when you want that cold beer, um, if that point of sale system is connected to Wi-Fi and that Wi-Fi network, sometimes they're private, but they can get oversubscribed with portable you know, scanners and, and checkout devices and that sort of thing. But Wi-Fi just doesn't provide the deterministic uh, connectivity that's required. Um, also, access points are, are limited with the number of concurrent connections they can support. Mm -hmm. With what Cisco and Orange are doing uh, to support the Olympics and the Paralympics is deploying a 5G standalone network, which gives you fiber-like throughput. And so you can support a massive uh, number of devices and, and that's for fans with smartphones. That's for the Olympics that are uh, delivering fan activations like custom camera angles and, and, and that sort of thing. 
and, and importantly for, for point of sale, because, you know, you have to have connectivity with that and, you know, people need to be mobile that are serving uh, these refreshments at places like Wimbledon and in the Olympics and that sort of thing. So from just from an overall, you know, sort of fan experience, uh, 5G really, really shines. And uh, it's, it's a great example of what can be accomplished when, when you size a network correctly to support a huge, you know, uh, venue and event like the Olympics, because you may expect a certain number of fans, but sure enough, you're probably going to have double the number of people show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's interesting that the fan experience is one thing, but when the fans don't have a good experience on something like concessions, that's also a revenue loss. Exactly. So yeah. you have, you know, if people can't pay for things. These events, like you know, the the MLB game, the Olympics, all these major events are huge economic drivers for cities. That's the reason why cities bid on these things is because the, the amount of money, I think it was like $90 million was just for Arlington for the MLB game. Mm -hmm. The you know, cities pay millions, if not, I don't know, probably billions of dollars to improve their infrastructure for Olympics. I mean, I saw just what Los Angeles did for the Olympics many years ago, but mm -hmm. you know, it's, it is the fan experience is one thing, but it does really affect. There's a business element of that too. Of if you can't sell the beer, the fan is mad, but the business yeah. cares. Just a quick question, Will. What what's yeah. changed over the last 10, 15 years for what the technology we're going to see in Paris to what we saw, you know, in Tokyo or in other cities from the Olympics perspective? What what should the fans get beyond what? they've gotten in the past? Yeah, and that's a great question, Robert. So, you know, over the last decade, I mean, a decade in the technology world is like, you know, I don't know, eons and, and, other, and other industries. And you've seen dramatic improvements in Wi-Fi, number one. Um, and you've seen dramatic improvements moving from 3G to 4G to 5G. So mm -hmm. these, these Gs are typically a decade in length. And so if we look back 10 years ago, that was decidedly 4G. And what 5G does, it does a number of things. It, it improves latency um, by 100%, like 100x. It, improves, it increases device support by like a factor of 25 or 30x. Uh, it improves throughput by a factor of like 50x. So when you take all those things into consideration, you can support more concurrent users. You can almost achieve fiber-like throughput and latency wirelessly. Mm -hmm. Where and then and we're I know Mel we're going to get into the to the broadcast use case and, and why that's such an advantage, but just overall Robert you know the the improvement in latency and and throughput and device support and I also mentioned security security is a big deal, and the Olympics are very concerned about hackers and taking down networks and that sort of thing because it's it's on the global stage, and five G also provides enhanced encryption over LTE to prevent would be hackers from bringing down these networks. Great. Appreciate that. So, yeah. Mel, should we jump into the, uh, I'm not sure of the best spelling or say orange uh, and how oh, they're right. contributing right. contributing to, um, to the Olympics? Because that seems like, as you break it down from a business perspective, it goes a little deeper from a technology standpoint. And maybe we can kind of chat about that for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of the, something really interesting about this is that some of the cameras are smartphones. They're not like, it's not some big, you know, production you would expect with these big cameras. So when they do the, um, the original, like, I guess it would be sort of like a boat parade down mm -hmm. the sun, they're going to be using smartphones. That yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's, that's accurate. And one of the kind of the presumptive use cases for, for 5G was around crowdsourced journalism. And so the whole notion of if you've got this super fast network with, you know, sub five millisecond latency in a standalone configuration and the massive device support that a 5G network can, can, uh, you know, support that you can now allow like someone with a smartphone to be almost like a, you know, a, a camera crew in a traditional kind of news, you know, van, like anchorman, you know, type thing. So, so yeah, that, that's, that's doable because 
again, you have an IP network that's supported with the throughput that 5G brings. I don't know why I don't get very good 5G coverage on my cell phone. Why? why like, I mean, you see all this stuff about like the 5G is so much better, but uh, at my house, it's just not. So somebody needs yeah, to. Yeah, it's, but it's still, you know, I call it, you know, it's sort of a work in progress. And we're, you, you could argue that, you know, um, mobile network operators began the deployment of 5G dating all the way back to 2018, 2019. We had this thing called non standalone, which was sort of the tweener. And what it meant was, it, it allowed mobile network operators to upgrade the towers and the radio infrastructure, the radio access network infrastructure, but run um, the core on LTE or 5G. And so what that created was a delay in, in getting the full you know, promise of 5G rolled out. Where we're at now, and Anshul and I, we, we have our GT on 5G podcast, and we've talked about this quite a bit over the last couple of years, if not the last four or five years, is that now finally... That investment in RAN infrastructure has occurred, and that's evidenced by Ericsson, Nokia, Samsung, all the big infrastructure providers talking about how weak their RAN business is. But now it's all about upgrading that core infrastructure. And so at the Olympics, this is one of the things that Cisco is bringing to the Olympics is a converged core, which will support mm -hmm. Onrage's deployment of a standalone private 5G network. So not relying on a public network like my experience at Coda a couple of years ago, but a discrete network that is sized for all the applications and use cases, including IP broadcasting to support 4K and 8K video streaming. Wonderful. Yeah. Have, either, have either one of you been to the Olympics? I, I never have. My scenario. brother my brother went to the Atlanta Olympics many years ago, and all I got Me was too. a crummy T-shirt. I was there too. <laughs> Though this technology wasn't available, but it was—it's yeah. one of the most extraordinary experiences. It's like Mel's version of going to Wimbledon. You know, um, it's just a lot of fun. One one quick story: we sat and went to see a wrestler from the United States play Iran. We got in there the last second, and we thought we were sitting in the right section, but we were in the Iranian section. And like we stood up when the uh, the USA guy took him down, and then we looked around, and everybody was Iranian. So we were in the wrong section. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> so it's pretty, yeah. pretty funny. But it's such a mix of cultures, and, and it's so needed to have this technology so the world gets to see what's on stage because it's that special. So I mean, and here's the deal. The now. bottom line, like, Mel, you're talking about how, you know, cities pay, you know, millions, if not, you know, more to host these events. I mean, Paris wants to ensure that everyone has a great experience. And, you know, bottom line, a lot of times people just make an assumption about connectivity that it's going to be there, it's going to function, it's going to work. And so I really give the Paris Olympic Committee a lot of credit in picking Cisco because Cisco, I mean, IP networking has been around for decades, right? But the difference now is there have been a lot of advancements in routing and that sort of thing. And now you have private 5G. So this partnership with Orange and, and, and Cisco it's really a, a partnership of, of you know, two equals from, from my perspective because Orange is bringing that experience as one of the largest mobile network operators in Europe. Um, they've been very forward leaning on, on not just deploying 5G for the sake of 5G and data plans, but really focused on use cases, both in business and consumer. And then you know, Cisco has been a great partner. Their, their mass scale infrastructure group Jonathan Davidson's the executive, a good friend of mine that runs that organization at Cisco. Um, they've been doing a lot of innovation when it comes to 5G core and when it comes to transport networks. Cisco is also one of the largest optical networking providers uh, on the planet. And so from, from my perspective, bringing Cisco and Orange together uh, was, was the right decision that the Paris Olympic Committee could make. And also NBC um, announced that they'll be using Cisco's security and observation observability solutions as well. So Cisco yep. has a really long history with NBC also. Yep. So, I mean, we're talking a lot about what's happening like sort of on the ground in Paris, but NBC will be broadcasting live to, to the US using Cisco with the IP production and for mm -hmm. both the Olympics and the Paralympic games. Yeah. So they've been, they've been doing a lot with Cisco for years, right? Yeah, it's been a. It sounds like it's been about a decade. I, as I sort of dug into the to the subject matter here before our podcast recording, and um, and I'm glad you brought up security again, Mel, because that's a, that's a very very important consideration and also observability. So, 
Cisco has been, you know, just, you know, slowly building its capabilities and observability. A lot of that has been through acquisition. So they've acquired AppDynamics and then they acquired Thousand Eyes. And, and, you know, over the last year and a half, you know, a, another half dozen companies, a CDN and other Sam knows. So that what, what observability does is it really provides visibility into the network and bottlenecks and issues. And that is also leveraged very heavily for, for security so that you can be very proactive. You can sense what's happening on the network. And if there's any anomalies, you know, these, these capabilities that Cisco has brought together in their what they call their full stack observability platform um, allows that network operator, that network group to be able to, uh, to assess what's going on and resolve issues very quickly. I also understand, so Cisco has a, uh, a mobile SOC, so a security operations center. It moves from uh, event to event. I got a tour at RSA conference this yeah. year. And yeah, when I met when I met with the two um, Cisco folks that that manage that, they did mention that they were taking that to the Paris Olympics. So wow. that is also a part of what Cisco is providing. Now, I, I will state that Cisco over the years they've been sort of you know on again, off again with respect to security, but now they're they're fully focused. Uh, yeah. The acquisition of Splunk, huge acquisition brings data observability into the mix. Robert, I know that's your area, so I'm not going to yep. talk nope, much about that. But, um, but you know, and then also what the investment that the company has been making in the Cisco security cloud and, um, and, and really focusing on that and putting a lot of resources behind that. Um, Cisco is a different company now, and, and, and they realize that security is a huge issue. Networking and security continue to, um, to consolidate and come together because there are obvious benefits. When you can when you can integrate both networking and security into the same technology stack, so I you know I think what people are going to going to see from from Cisco's perspective is a company that is very very focused on providing the very best connectivity infrastructure and security infrastructure, and Orange is going to provide um, the service to back all that. Yeah, and I you know that's really what Game Time Tech is about is for us to show not just what the fans get out of this, but what do technology companies, how do they showcase their technology in a way that people understand it and in a way that people want to sort of um, digest it. You know, it's like here, everybody loves the Olympics. Everybody loves, well, I think everybody loves baseball. So <laughs> I, when yeah. I hear, hear people say they don't love baseball, I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, yeah, you're crazy. <laughs> somebody said that they were happy that their kid didn't play baseball because it's like watching paint dry. And I'm like, I can't, I don't think we can be friends. No. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in a way that like it makes the, the thing that is complicated, it makes it really easy to understand when you can tie it to something that we we watch, we love, we do. So I think, you know, thank you for explaining a lot of these things, for making it, you know, giving, being our, our, our subject matter expert on this. Thanks for joining us thank on you. this episode of Game Time Tech. I think, you know, as we get closer to the Olympics, we'll probably have a lot more things to talk about because there are so many technologies that are going to go into making this Olympics really special. I saw a lot of them kind of coming together when I was in Paris last week. So we'll have more to discuss, but um, Will, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who tuned in. If there's something you do want to hear about for either Cisco, Orange, the Olympics, um, or what you want us to talk about on Game Time Tech, hit us up on Twitter or um, in the comments, and we would be happy to talk about it on an upcoming episode. And uh, thanks for joining us, and we will see you.